Today we're going to talk about several topics. The actual fundamentals of A&R, but also the changes in the A&R landscape as far as emerging markets and the changes in music across the globe. So let's now do a deep dive. Any other questions? Or am I doing okay? Perfect. You can edit that, right? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. My name is Sap Bissler, president and founder of A&R Worldwide in Los Angeles, California. And our focus is to help discover, develop, and elevate artists to their greatest potential across pop culture. A&R is the lifeblood of the entire music business. And even though the ecosystem of distribution, consumption, technology, and other platforms constantly evolve, the principles of A&R are always fundamentally the same. It's about the artist and the song. Without exceptional talent, you really have no ability to have long-term success. Now, sure, with A&R today, with analytics and research-driven data platforms like TikTok, Spotify, YouTube, a lot of the times A&R people will focus on the actual metrics of data to mitigate their risk when it comes to signing an artist. Now, sometimes artists can live successfully on these platforms, but they don't necessarily translate across other touch points, whether that's live, radio, synchronization, which is the input of music within film, TV, gaming, promos, trailers, etc. So, you know, for an artist to really elevate themselves successfully as a movement-driven artist, they really need to captivate audiences across all platforms across the globe. Other aspects that are really important to help develop an artist are artists and relationships. Relationships with the consumer, relationships with the industry, and relationships with different platforms. Because without relationships, you won't really go the distance. And besides artists and relationships, ultimately, the goal is to have artists make revenue because it is the music business, not the business of music, as some people like to think today. Those are some of the four pillars that we like to focus on at a and Worldwide, artists and repertoire, analytics and research, artists and relationships, and ultimately, artists and revenue. Now, the A&R business has changed drastically over the past 10 years, in particular with technology, but also with emerging markets. We've seen crossover artists, you know, burgeoning out of Latin America, but we've also seen the rise of K-pop. We're also seeing now the rise of artists breaking from Africa with Afrobeat, but also other genres across Asia, Southeast Asia, and other parts of Latin America. So the music ecosystem has become very diversified, whether it's production, songwriting, or just the consumption of artists because consumers no longer are inhibited as to where they can consume music. And what I'm seeing in recent months, you know, especially coming back from India, is a large uptick of artists from that part of the world, but also Southeast Asia in general, crossing over into the US and the Western diaspora. There's a large population of Indians that live in North America, but also across the UK, as well as markets like Australia, South Africa, Kenya, and other destinations. So that's part of the reason why you're seeing a lot of Indian artists now crossing over. You know, the likes of Baj Shah, AP Dillon, Arman Malik, and uh, Dalgit Dasan, who recently played Coachella in Southern California to rupturous applause and great media coverage. So my forecast is that we will start seeing more artists breaking through for markets like Southeast Asia and Asia into the global marketplace, and not just in the music ecosystem, but also across pop culture because we are seeing a lot more music being integrated into film, TV, video games, and commercials that resonates from emerging markets that maybe at one point weren't as impactful into the West and other sort of broader established markets. I think the important thing that artists need to realize today, as well as songwriters, is that it's very easy to create moments where you have a viral sensation that maybe breaks through on Spotify, YouTube, or TikTok, but how do you really develop movements? And movements are what legacy artists create. They create an impact that lasts longer than the artist's life cycle in the marketplace. And at A&R Worldwide, our focus is always about longevity, creating movements and not just focusing on moments. Because like fast food, it creates a moment of happiness, but it's not necessarily healthy for you long-term if you consume it on a constant basis. And I really like to encourage artists to be authentic with over 100,000 songs being released on Spotify on a daily basis alone, the margin to be exceptional is very, very high. So there's a lot of good out there, a certain amount of great, but you've got to rise to be exceptional and make sure that your music, your image, your messaging and your branding is holistic, authentic, and really speaks as one voice 
to the consumer because ultimately, in order for the consumer to be a passionate music fan, they have to live and breathe and believe that you are authentic. The music has to touch you in the most personal ways and not just as a passive experience. So my hope is that artists moving forward will focus on the fundamentals of longevity and not just moment-driven art. Think about the movement.